Psalms chapter 145. David's Psalm for Praise. So David's going to show us how to praise God. Found in the Bible. I will extol, that is to raise in words, to praise, to magnify. So you magnify God, you make God bigger. You don't make yourself, when you make man or yourself bigger, that's pride. When you magnify God, that's praising God. I will extol thee, my God. It do you no good to praise God if he's not your God. And it'll do you no good to praise God when you're not praising God. So what do you mean by that? You're praising another God, a small G-O-D. In the realm of religion and science, another God that you honor and praise is not worthy of God. Because there are no gods but God. He has to be your God, my God, David said. And to be my God today, as we are listening to this video, you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You have to put your sins under the blood of Jesus Christ and be cleansed and become a child of God. Then he becomes your God. You reject Jesus Christ, he's not your God. O King, I'll exalt thee, my God, O King. I will bless, make happy thy name forever and ever. David just said, listen, David, the sure mercies of David. David has set forth a fact. David's going to live forever. And he will. We know David's coming back in the millennium. And David says, forever and ever. What are we going to do in glory? We're going to extol the Lord. We're going to bless his name. We're going to please God. We're going to magnify God. We're not going to heaven because of me, and we're not going to heaven because of you. If you don't love the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not going to love heaven. Every day. You got that? You get that? Will I bless, make happy, be, that's God. And I will praise thy name forever and ever. Not the name of a sports team. Not the name of an actor or actress. Not even the name of your pastor or the name of your church. Or somebody in your family or even yourself. God's name. There is no name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That name is the name of Jesus Christ. Great is the Lord. And the hymn is, How Great Thou Art, but many people today throughout the world, How Great I Am. How Great My Church Is. How Great My Team Is. How Great My Job Is. How Great My Car Is. That's not praising God. Greatly to be praised. God is great. Greatly to be praised. And his, God's greatness. Look, look at the great. Great, greatly. Greatness is unsearchable. So in other words, you can Google God and his greatness. And it's great. And Google couldn't tell you all how great God's greatness is. The Bible can't even tell you all the greatness because it says it's unsearchable. I'm going to look through the 66 books of the Bible. It's unsearchable. You know, there are stories of the life of Jesus that's not recorded, what John tells us. 
There are stories of Elijah and Elijah that we have not been told. There are stories we have not been told about Adam and Eve. There's countless stories that have not been written. The book of Acts is not a complete book. The book of Revelation is not complete to the fact that I'm saying it, it can't write down every detail. That's what I mean, not complete. God finished Genesis to Revelation in the King James Bible. But there are things missing. I mean, you get a woman in the Old Testament, a fine woman, you know, she becomes pregnant, then boom, she has a baby. Uh, it takes nine months. All the great mercies that God played with Sarah for the nine months, a woman over her 90 years old, I guarantee you it was not a easy uh, pregnancy for her, nor was it in probably an easy uh, birth. One generation shall praise thy works to another generation. You take your praise of God and you pass it on to your children and your children pass it on to your grandchildren and your grandchildren pass it on to the great-grandchildren and the great-grandchildren pass it on to great-great-children. You know what's wrong with the church today? They don't pass on the greatness of God. And listen, I'm going to just quote from Revelation chapter 3. We're great. Look, we're wonderful. Look how great we are. We have no need of nothing. Well, that's what you brought up with to your children. And you see bumper stickers with the church name, but you don't see any bumper stickers with scripture. You know how many times I've gone out witnessing, door knocking I've done, and public ministry, and I'll say, do you know where you're going to go when you die? Do you have assurance of your die if you go to heaven? I go to this church. That's not the answer. Who taught you to say that? You ask my children, they'll say they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And shall declare, make known thy mighty works. That's called testimony. That don't happen in churches, as far as the churches I've been in. And then again, I forget which church I was in that did that. I think it was once a, once a month. And you get somebody, they get up there and they start testimony. You know, what the government, uh, seriously, what the government did for them. What their mom did for them. What their husband or wife did. No, it's supposed to be about what God has done. You know what that declare that mighty acts is? You know what song that is? Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. I will speak of glorious honor of thy majesty. Majesty is great, holy authority and power. God is above every king in this world. God is above every prime, prime minister. God is above every president. God is up above every tribal leader. God is above the czar in Russia, whatever they call him. God has more power. And even the devil is limited by his power because he's got to get permission from God to use his power. And yet all the video games, you gotta get this power. You gotta touch this square, you gotta run over this, you gotta kick that, you gotta open that to get power. My God is full of power. Thy wondrous work. All the great things that God has done in the Bible and all the great things God has done in our life. You realize there is wonder there's wondrous work that God has done in our life that we had no idea in what God did. That moment that God gave you that red light, you have no idea what He prevented you. That day that you overslept that alarm clock and you were put to a rut, you don't know what God prevented you. I can think about being a father of my children. Just that moment that God said, get in that room, get up and go check. <laughs> now get up and go, oh, that's one of the works of God. I had one time, I was out in the middle of a lake, I was swimming, 
I got tired and I drowned. And all but the fact is I drowned and I put my hand out and there was the raft. That raft was not there. That raft was, was anchored elsewhere. And I put my hand out and I grabbed that raft. I grabbed the ladder of that raft. I was saved. But I would have gone, gone to glory with no reward. And men, plural, shall speak of the mighty and terrible act. Terrible means it inspires terror. Makes you go, I mean, COVID-19 is supposed to be, wow. You know, I better love and honor God before this mask and wash my hands. I better realize if I go out and put a mask on, God is mighty enough that he may have that virus come in under my mask and into me, and I still can get sick. Terrible accident, you know, uh, tornadoes. And listen, even the insurance company said it's an act of God. And those are terrible accidents. They're supposed to be, it's supposed to draw the fear of God. You know, I don't want to upset a holy, mighty God. I got a guy I've been witnessing to for about years now. And he just comes out and, and listen, he's unsafe. So I, I expect it from him. You know, all the dead babies, all the crises, all the problems, and a great, mighty, loving God and all the problems. You're supposed to look at that and still say, not, you know, how terrible God is, but how terrible God is. Wait a minute, that don't make sense. God is not the author of the dead. God's not author of the prophet. But you just say, you know, God's in control. God can put somebody in a hospital bed for the rest of their life. Listen, if you don't, if you don't do the Lord's Supper properly, it says you can die, you can get sick. You know what that terror is supposed to be? I, when I take part of the Lord's Supper, I better do it correctly. Not haphazard. I will declare thy greatness. There's that declare again. Counting your blessings, name them one by one. And the greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory, that will be the men, verse 6, of thy great good. Look at the greats and good. Now we saw the good in, in chapter 144. That goodness that we saw was Jesus Christ. Chapter 144, verse 2. And we see that people, my goodness. You're not good. Thy great goodness. You know, there are things God has done for somebody and me and you. That God just did it because he was good. I just want to please him. And there have been times that grandma, grandpa, mom, and dad, they've done something. You know what? I just want to just love you and want to do good. That's our God and Father. And we'll sing. We saw the singing, Psalms 144, verse 9. I will sing of thy righteousness. So what is this monstrous music of uh, that found in the churches today in contemporary music? That doesn't sing of God's righteousness. It, it, you know, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shut up. How great thou art. What a mighty God. A mighty fortress. A great God and Savior. The Lord is gracious. The Satan, Satan is not great. Almost said this Satan. Satan is not gracious. You know everything for what God is, Satan is not. Satan doesn't know how to show grace. Full of compassion. Full. He's slow to anger. He's long-suffering, the Bible says. And a great mercy. Mercy is the treat offender better than what he deserves. I deserve hell. And the great mercy is I am not going to hell. 
though I deserve it. Jesus Christ went to hell for me. He didn't have to. You know, Jesus Christ did not have to do it. He wanted to do it. There's a big difference between wanna and have to. God did not force Jesus Christ to go to Calvary. Jesus Christ said, I'll go. And the Bible says he learned obedience. On his way to Calvary and death and hell and the resurrection, he learned what it was to be a man. God never cried at a funeral to John 11.35. The Lord is good to all, saved and unsaved. Jesus said he makes it to rain on the just and unjust. There are people out there who I don't believe in God. I don't need God. And your garden was watered with, with water by God that you don't believe in. You turn on your hot and cold running water and God gave you that water. We go to a farmer's market. There are people that sell fruits and vegetables that God gave. And I guarantee many of them are not thanking God for that fruit and vegetable. They're going to give an account for that one day. Jesus even blessed the meal when he fed the 4,000 and the 5,000. Now, if Jesus had to bless the meal, and his tender offer, offer for tender, you know, money, money tender, legal tender, his tender, his offer, his payment, mercies are over all his works. When it comes to salvation, God's like, I'll take care of that. It's all on me. You want to go to heaven? Yes, Lord, I want to go to heaven. It's all on me. And when someone says, no, I don't want to believe on Jesus, what are you going to pay with? I'm going to whip out my wallet. You mean the wallet that's made with cow hide that God made the cow? You're going to use paper and fiber products that God made the paper and fiber products? You're going to pay God for your salvation with something that God gave you. Every source of money wherever you are in the world, wherever you are in the world, comes from a natural resource, and that natural resource comes from God. All thy work, God's work, shall praise thee. The heavens praise God's splendor. The marine life praise and what God can do. All the animals, just look at how great God is in all the different animals. <clears throat> and you can just sit there. I mean, bird watchers are amazed when they just sit there and look at God's creature called the bird. And there are books written about one specific bird. And that's the works of God to say, God made that. And it defies evolution. Thy saints, that's me, shall bless thee. Make You're supposed to make God happy. Now, according to the Catholic Church, saints are people who have died, and they found some miracle in them, and they make them sainthood. How can a dead person make God happy? That's a false teaching in the Catholic Church. I'm a saint. My job is to please God. If you're a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, you're saved, you're washed in the blood, your job is to bless God and make God happy. Not you being happy, God. They, the saints, shall speak of the glory of, the, of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. Try that on a Sunday morning and see what they talk about. Recipes, ball games. You hear what's going on in Portland. Oh, you know, the Democrats, oh, the Republicans, or... You know, we're planning our vacation. Gee, we're going to go to Mickey Ratland, and or we're going to do this, or you know, that family of mine. I just can't. You know, it's not what it's about. 
We're supposed to speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power, the power of God. To make known to the sons of men his mighty act. We are to tell others the testimony. Of God. You know, hey, you know, I got this medical issue everyone's been praying about. You know what? God's just taking care of it. I had this issue, and God took care of it. I've got this issue, but, you know, I still got it. But, you know, I've got peace. God showed me mercy. And the glorious, glorious majesty again of his kingdom. That kingdom, is, you know, is the kingdom for the Jews when the Jesus Christ comes. Don't get that kingdom mixed up with the church age in heaven in Matthew. When Jesus speaks about the kingdom in, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he's talking about that land that God's going to give them with Jesus Christ, sitting as king on David's throne. David's a Jew. He wants a piece of land, and he's going to get that piece of land. And how wonderful that piece of land is going to be when the curse is removed and the lion's going to lie with the, with the lambs. And the only thing that still curses that serpent, he's going to eat dust. But everything else is just great and blessed. You won't need street preachers in, in the millennium. They'll all know Jesus. That's the kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. It's a supreme authority, the power of governing. And we're not going to vote for anybody in the millennium. Oh, he keeps talking about voting. Well, you get this thing over with and done, and I'll shut up about voting. I'll go back to Santa Claus and Christmas. No one's going to vote for Jesus in the millennium. Jesus, I, I've been saying this a lot lately, last couple weeks, I forgot how long I'm going to say. Jesus is neither Democrat nor Republican. He's Almighty God. And you can come up with whatever you want to do. It's not in the Bible. I'll get off it now. The Lord upholdeth all that fall. All. We have a merciful and mighty God that cares for all. It's the moment that you die without God's grace today, Jesus Christ, that you're going to fall. He won't pick you up. Raises up all those that be bowed down. That was that woman. I forget where, he, where Jesus was. There was that woman, great age, who's bowed over. And he heals her in, in the Pharisees or whoever. Well, you healed her on the Sabbath day. He says, listen, this woman's been in pain all these years. Why don't you shut up and get happy? That's when Jesus comes. That's one of the things he did in his first advent. He'll do it in the millennium. The eyes of all wait on thee. I'm an atheist. I don't. Yeah, you'll have your waiting line at the Great White Throne Judgment. And thou, God, yeah, givest them their meat in their due season. An atheist, I'm picking on them because they don't believe in God. We'll have to give an account on why the three meals they ate every day and their snacks. Why they didn't give God the glory. And that fits for everybody. But I'm picking on the atheist today. Thou God openest thy hand and satisfiest the desire of every living thing, including animals. God feeds the animal. God gives us to our satisfaction. And yet, let's get down to the point is, God may say, no, I don't want you to have that. God may say, oh, not now. But God is a good father 
wants to give good. He said, I mean, if your child asks for a, a, a fish, are you going to give him a serpent? God doesn't do that. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. God will never do evil. God will never sin. And holy in all his works, righteous, without sin. You'll never find God doing wrong. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. Are you one of his children? He's nigh. He's right there with you. He's a little further if you're backslidden, but he's near you. Even the prodigal son, he knew where his father was the whole time. And all that call upon him in truth, be honest with God. God, you know, I really don't like what you're doing in my life right now. Be honest. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. Again, it won't be worldly, carnal, sinful desires. If it's holy and righteous and can praise the Lord Jesus Christ, it may be granted. Maybe. But what do you do with Paul? Three times the Holy Spirit told Paul, you better not go down to Jerusalem. Don't you dare go to Jerusalem. Paul, Paul, what do you do in Jerusalem? Put him in bonds. Put him in jail. Wouldn't you say that was a good intention to Paul? He wanted the Jews to be witness. He wanted to get the Jews to know Jesus. James and Peter and, and were taking care of the job. I think when, when, when Paul shows up, James says, but look, at there's thousands of Jews here. And yet they're still under the law because they're living amongst lawful Jews, but they're saved. Paul, we really didn't need you here. So even sometimes our desires, we think, wow, how great God would be happy with this. God's like, uh... Let me rename you for a moment. Okay, what do you want to name me? I want to name you Jonah. Jonah? Yeah, I told you to go one way. You went completely the other way. I don't like that. So you got to be careful. You can't say name and claim it. Paul named it and God said, you ain't claiming it. And where did Paul end it up? He ended up where God wanted him, in Rome. But I think what? It took over two years to get there. The Lord preserve it, that keeps up, keeps alive, keeps well. All them that love him. But all the wicked will he destroy. So God, not everybody's going to heaven. Not everybody has God's favor. There's those that love God and there's those that hate God. My mouth. David's mouth, my mouth, shall speak the praise of the Lord. How do I praise the Lord? Didn't you just read this whole chapter? And let all flesh, let all flesh, that's animals. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Every knee shall bow and, and proclaim that Jesus is the Lord saved or lost. Better do it before you die. 